begin. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for preparing yourself to join in our expert lecture today. I hope you are all in good condition, healthy and always be blessed. And we thank the almighty God who has given us this wonderful opportunity to do expert lecture held by English Education Study Program, Toraja Christian University of Indonesia, Toraja. Respectable, the head of English Education Study Program, Ms. Judith Ratu Tandi Arang, Master of Education. The Honorable, our special expert lecture today. I will uh, say your name later <laughs> because I hope that I will uh, spell um, based on your uh, pronunciation. Well, and also the honorable, all the attendees from other university, even from other country. Yes, from other countries. Our beloved student and all the participants of this expert lecture. Um, I am Selfie Pangua, the moderator of today's expert lecture. And I'm very grateful to see you here and welcome you all here today to this wonderful uh, opportunity. So uh, today expert lecture is about digital literacy in education, teaching and learning English. And I'm sure uh, we all know how important the digital literacy nowadays. And I believe every student, every teacher really need this literacy in the teaching and learning process. So therefore, our uh, expert lecture today is going to focus on the theme. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, beloved students and all the attendees, uh, perhaps we can make a start. And proudly, I would like to introduce our expert speaker today. He is Mr. Luis Miguel Cardozo. Uh, he holds a PhD in Modern Languages and Literatures in the Speciality of Comparative Literature, the University of Coimbra. Um, he is a young professor at the Department of Language and Communication Sciences at the School of Education and Social Sciences of the Polytechnic Institute of Porto Alegre, Portugal. He is a professor of higher education since 1995. And he was uh, the Dean of School of Education and Social Sciences between 2010 and 2018, and the Deputy Director of the Master in Media and Society. He is also a researcher at the Center, of, at the Center for Comparative Studies at the University of Lisbon. Um, Mr. Cardoso, um, was the president of Association of Reflection and Intervention in the Educational Policy of Higher Education Schools in Portugal from 2015 to 2018. And he was the coordinator of the Communication Bureau of the Polytechnic Institute of Porto Alegre. His main areas of teaching and research are sciences of language and communications, pedagogical innovation, literacy, education, and literature and cinema, under which published articles and made presentation in Portugal and several countries, including Brazil, Spain, France, UK, Italy, Greece, Hungary, Bulgaria, Thailand, Turkey, Colombia, Indonesia, Ukraine, Pakistan, uh, UAE, Philippines, and India. And in 2016, he published the book, Literature and Cinema, The Look of Janus, Virgilio Ferreira, and the Space of the Unspeakable by Edition 70, Portugal. He is a member of several international organizations and associations, 
as well as a member of the editorial editorial board of international journals in the areas of language and communication sciences, comparative literature, literature and cinema, literacy and education. So well, <clears throat> um, we'll go over today's uh, expert lecture uh, presentation by our expert. And the next, there will be Q and A sessions. And the last is conclusion. So let's start with the presentation by Mr. Luis Miguel Cardoso, PhD. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Cardoso with a round of applause. Or you may uh, click the reaction applause in your wall. Well, so time is yours, Mr. Cardoso. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Warm greetings from Portugal to Indonesia. Uh, good morning here in Portugal. Good afternoon in Indonesia. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizing committee for the kind invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here. Great honor to be here. I would also uh, like to thank our um, moderator and uh, the um, absolutely um, uh, kind and, and enjoyable presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your very kind words. I would like to, of course, uh, welcome all the participants um, at this session. And I hope that we can share ideas and share uh, examples of good practices uh, regarding digital literacy and, and teaching English. So um, I would like to uh, share a presentation. Can you confirm that it's visible, please? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So my dear friends and my dear colleagues, um, the topic that I chose for today's presentation is digital literacy in education, teaching and learning English. So nowadays, dear colleagues and dear friends, digital literacy is becoming more and more important. Education and technology are great allies, as we have been seeing during the last uh, two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic, for example. And technology was a great help for us teachers and for all our students to go ahead with education and to uh, enhance students' capabilities uh, regarding knowledge and principles and values. This is why uh, technology is so important in education. And of course, nowadays, we must understand that literacies are also absolutely vital for us teachers. They are vital because our society is changing very fast and the labor market is very demanding for our students. So we have to give our students the proper tools, the proper literacies, in order to um, provide them with knowledge and skills uh, that are needed in the labor market. So my dear friends, of course, the teaching and learning English, it's, uh, it's our topic for today. So uh, what is the real and true connection between education, technology, literacies, and most important, the connection between digital literacy and teaching and learning English. So first of all, we must understand that digital literacy is connected with a lot of skills that are very important for us to master. So first of all, critical thinking is absolutely vital in our classroom, not just for us, but also for our students. And of course, we have digital search skills that are required, not just for us, but also for our students. Online identity management, and of course, 
uh, two of our major concerns nowadays are internet safety and digital plagiarism. So this is why it's so important to share with our students best practices regarding research, regarding the authors that we are um, researching and sharing their ideas correctly. So digital literacy, my dear friends and my dear colleagues, it's all about creating and understanding opportunities and competencies. So first of all, we uh, have to highlight ICT innovation in ICT or and with ICT. So this implies rights and responsibilities, um, social awareness and identity, pooling knowledge, judgment, problem solving, reflection, synthesizing, safety and security. And all this leads us to navigation skills and assessing skills. So this is our main opportunity. And then we have competence. And when we try to understand this key concept, we can find, for example, critical creative thinking connected with cultural empowerment, citizenship, research information fluency, distributed cognition, appropriation, creativity, network, simulation, decision-making, multitasking, input and output skills, tools, and text skills. So this is just a portrait of a framework that we can use in our classrooms in order to go ahead with digital literacy with our students. And digital literacy implies uh, digital technologies, of course. This is why teacher training is so important. It is very important in our universities to have teacher training opportunities and teacher training programs in order to give our uh, teachers and uh, of course their future students the capability of using digital technologies. Also the capability of using information, academic media and data literacy, digital citizenship and identity, because we want our students to be great professionals, but we also want our students to be valuable citizens. And of course, the use of digital creation and communication, digital learning, professional and lifelong is very, very important. So my dear friends, digital literacy is about connecting education, technology, skills, and the opportunity to change, to, to be flexible. Digital literacy skills, as we understand, concept, implies the ability and the know-how in conjunction with critical thinking across the very digital platforms and devices. So we are dealing with a lot of platforms and devices. And one of our major tasks is to select the proper tools, the proper technological tools. So having digital literacy skills means possessing a combination of digital skills, competence, knowledge, practical ability, research, digital learning, understanding, evaluation, interpretation, creation, and communication. And of course, the area between digital skills and digital literacies is where digital literacy skills lie. This is absolutely uh, vital for us to understand why digital literacy skills are so important. Examples of digital literacy skills leads us, for example, to app development, 
data analysis and analytics interpretation, uh, deck presentation creation, digital communication, digital content creation, digital copywriting, information evaluation, photo and visual literacy, search engine optimization, social media content management, and software creation. Of course, it is very difficult to master all these digital literacy skills, but for us teachers and teacher training um, mentors, we have to understand that we have a lot of digital literacy skills. And we have to understand that dig, uh, these uh, digital literacy skills uh, can give us a lot of tools for our uh, classes. So we have to research each and every one of them and try to uh, retain the best for all this for our students to be enhanced in digital skills. So digital skills and digital literacy are connected. On one hand, we have digital skills like word processing, spreadsheet creation, PowerPoint creation, image editing, video editing, web design, programming and coding. And then we have elements of digital literacies that include cultural, cognitive, constructive, communicative, confident, creative, critical, and civic. And when we connect digital skills and elements of digital literacies, we obtain digital literacy skills that include, as we said before, app development, analytics interpretation, deck creation, digital communication, and so on. So digital skills and elements of digital literacies give us digital literacy skills. And our major focus is, of course, our students, our learners. So if our learners are to be fully functional citizens in the 21st century, they need digital skills. We can promote these skills in parallel with teaching English. And digital skills and English can help many of our adult learners get ahead in the workplace or prepare our younger learners for better future job opportunities. And equally important, they can make our classes a lot more relevant and interesting in the here and now. According to Heron Jenkins, what students do in their online lives has nothing to do with what they are learning in school. And what they are learning in school has little or no value to contribute to who they are once the bell rings. So by integrating digital literacy work into our English classes, we can make them a little more relevant to who our learners at once they are outside the school environment. So this means that in the 21st century, we all need digital skills. We teachers need digital skills. Our students need digital skills. And these skills are very important in our English classes, not just for us to teach English, but also for our students to learn English. So this is a two-path opportunity. So what about integrating digital um, skills in our classrooms? So first of all, students learn by practicing. This is why exercises with them are so important. Computers and the internet are natural contexts to practice language skills for real life tasks 
and our students enjoy using internet and computers. So learners can practice English when finding information on their child's school website, for example, researching the going rate for apartments in their area, writing resume or using online learning programs. So practice English is about all this. It's important to use instructional activities and provide both an opportunity to practice digital skills and strengthen the problem solving process and place it in knowing what skill to use and when. As I said before, we have a lot of skills that uh, we can choose from and we must know our students very well. We must know our classes very well in order to choose uh, the proper tools to uh, give them uh, the most of the opportunities to enhance their capabilities regarding digital skills. And computers and the internet uh, offer endless opportunities for language learners to practice, whether through online programs or completing real digital tasks. Meanwhile, higher language competencies open up more opportunities for students to practice their digital literacy skills language and digital literacy instruction are mutually reinforcing. Let us now take a look at some strategies regarding teaching uh, English, uh, namely teaching English as a language for learners online. First of all, use your team. We are better if we work as a team. So work with your colleagues, share ideas, share best examples and best practices, and you will be all more involved in these tasks in your schools. So constantly text, email, call, and video chat to discuss the best way to meet our students' needs. It's so important to stay connected. So my dear friends, stay connected with your colleagues in order to share ideas. Second, use online tools to help assist students and their language needs. Using, for example, YouTube videos, recordings of you explaining directions, videos of you teaching a difficult math problem, using various online resources to help teach material. So translations are essential in all languages, directions for sure, and all are so important in keeping students engaged, and we want our students to be engaged. Number three, making work easily accessible. Use the online course management software Canvas, and Canvas can help you a lot. It has been awesome in posting resources, lectures, notes, readings, quizzes, etc., etc. And uh, Canvas can give our students a lot of learning opportunities. instruction, have them record video and then explain and teach uh, vocab words, a topic, a story, 